have to take somebody from outside to put in to really appreciate and you know Michael it's the same as our singers at home that we never put any heat in, and someone from somewhere else will come in and they think they were fantastic to the world's in you know yeah. but um, I always yeah. felt he was one of the most underestimated <coughs> traditional Irish singers in English particularly because they really are English. Michael but, Ross. Yeah, nobody Michael. sang Michael Ross. Yeah, yeah, good man. He was. Good but man. anyway, sure there you were. Oh, yeah. Now, <laughs> lovely Dick, yeah. Joe O'Connor, can we call on you to oh, follow that? God. How do you follow that? No idea. That's why I call on you. No, I, I have a great memory of uh, the last la in Sligo. I was heading up a hill to uh, an afternoon session and I met a young fellow with a racing bike that he was after hiring out at a street corner and we got talking and I never got to the session. The man was just over there. I see you went from one side of the town to the other, so that's the sound of the fair. Yeah. 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 Anyway, um, now let me see. In July of, of 1819, a young girl from outside the town of Croom was murdered out in the Shannon Estuary by her nobleman husband John Scanlon and his servant man Stephen <coughs> Sullivan. Her body was washed ashore at Money Point and she's buried in Buran Cemetery, which is between Kildicert and Kilrush. Scanlon was hanged for her murder and <coughs> some months later Sullivan was arrested in Scarter Glen, where he was living under an assumed name he confessed his guilt. And he too was hanged for the murder of 16-year-old Ellen Hanley, that are known as the Colleen Bourne. This is called Death Sails to Shannon. There is a lonesome secret place where gentle breezes <coughs> blow. High, high upon the rolling waves, a maiden whispers low. A ghostly boatman can be seen way out across the bay, <coughs> and small birds cry where Ellie died before the break of day. Arise, arise, my own true love, and be my loving wife. You will be my darling to cherish all my life. I will be contented if you will be my bride, and we'll hear the wild winds whispering along the Shannon side. You <coughs> spoke false words, John Scanlon. You spoke false <coughs> words to me. You did not keep me safe or warm or love me tenderly. You brought me to this barren place where wild flowers will not grow to make for me a lonesome grey where Shannon waters flow. I came to you, John Scanlon, all in my virgin gown. I loved you at the dawn of day and when the sun went down. I left the house where I was born, outside the town of Croom. Remember how we loved then, John, beneath the young May moon. But now, here in this boat I lie, tossed on a raging tide, I see cold murder on your brow and hate shine from your eyes. Why don't you kiss my cold, cold lips and hold my trembling hand and tell the boatman Sullivan to put me safe on land? I have never sailed a boat. Way out beyond the blue, I've never plucked a rose caressed by morning dew. No more I'll feel the pangs of love, or taste the bitter wine. I'll die on Carrig Island before the morning time. Pray tell to me, John Scanlon, before you take my life, why did you lie upon my bed and take me for your wife? Where are the golden vows you made to love me more and more as we watch the starlight's magic glow along the Shannon shore? I'll curse your name, John Scanlon, on this island where I'll die. You'll reap a lonely death upon the scaffold high. They'll speak your name with hate and shame when they tell of the Colleen Bourne. My ghost will rise on the Shannon tide before the break of dawn. There's a lonesome secret place where gentle breezes blow, high, high upon the rolling waves. A maiden whispers low. <coughs> a ghostly boatman can be seen just at the break of day. And a voice cries out, Remember me across the stormy bay. Good man. Good man. Good man. Good man. Good man.